Okay, now let me show you in real time how this all works. And if I execute the workflow and I go back to my Neato form right here and I make it side by side and I fill out my details. This and as soon as I click submit, the workflow should trigger. So I click submit right here and it should be triggering like that. I should be getting a call. So let's see. Yes, we have a call. Hello. Hello, am I speaking to Rish Oberwall? Yes, this is Rish. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can connect a voice AI caller with any form and it can do automatic outbound calling to whoever has filled that form in real time. For example, if I go to your website and fill a form using this method, you can pass on the name and the phone number or other details of that form to a VAPI AI caller. And then that caller is going to call the person who is going to fill this form automatically. And you can define the agent prompt as you like and configure your caller as per your business. So this essentially gives an AI voice to every single form that you can have either on your website or otherwise. And for this, I'm going to use a platform called Neato Forms, which is miles better than using Google Forms simply because it offers so many functionalities and, and it's completely free. So this is the form that I have designed, but let me show you the backend. So this is the backend of how you can design the form in Neato Forms. By the way, if you want to check out Neato, you can just go to neato.com. And the one I'm using right now in this tutorial is the Neato Form. And they have this check our insane pricing, which is absolutely free. And you just pay $5 to remove Neato branding. That is all. Everything they're offering is available for free, including payment integrations. And if I can tell one thing that will make you switch totally from Google Forms is that Neato Form can send you notifications of whenever somebody fills the form on email or Telegram or any other platform that you want to link with that. And they also give you webhook access, which we are going to use in today's tutorial with the help of N8N and VAPI to power this form with AI Caller. So let's come back to the dashboard. So they have all these tabs up there and the build one is the one that you will require to create the form first, right? So I just created a simple form like this. You can also add many elements like these drop down, phone numbers, matrix, even or uploading a file. There are so many possibilities. So I'm going to keep it very simple right here. And next up, I just can choose a simple theme like this. And if you come to settings, there are so many things that you can do with this. Like you can connect with Slack, Google Sheets, webhooks, Stripe, Zapier, UPI, MailChimp, Twilio. You can send an email to form submitter or you can send email from your domain, automation rules. The list is completely endless. But what we are focused on, a part called webhook. This is because we want to send the data of the form after it is filled to this webhook. And this webhook is going to be our N8N webhook. So let's go to my N8N instance. So this is a very simple but very powerful N8N automation that I have created for you for this tutorial in which we can just have an incoming form details whenever somebody fills this form. And for that, I have used just a very simple webhook trigger node as the first node, which you can just select from this and go to webhook and just select this one with a bold sign right here. This is the sign of a trigger. And that is it. That's the first node of your automation. I'll come to this one in a bit, but let me explain to you what this one does. Again, going back to our form. So once our form is complete, we go to settings and we search for webhooks and we have to add this link to our webhook right here. And we click save changes. And now whenever somebody fills this form, all the data will be received inside this webhook, which we'll use to connect a VAPI caller in our complete workflow, right? So let me just test it out. Let me just disable all of these first and let me test it out for you for test events. So if I do this and I go back to my init and form and I'm going to make it side by side and let's say I type my name, doesn't matter and I can put any phone number. And if I click submit, this should trigger this webhook on the right, right? So we just got our details. So let me just close this out. Okay, let's check what were the details that we got from our uh, webhook event, right? So on the webhook, we will see that our name is right here. 
our email is right here and our phone number is right here which are the three things which we'll want and need for our AI caller right so once we have got all of this what we'll do is I'll have to have an edit field section in the next part of my note the reason is because the phone number that is the format that NitoCal sends it in is not the format that VAPI accepts right so VAPI does not need all these spaces dashes and brackets inside the phone number it has to have a clean phone number with just the international code and for that we have to clean this phone number and sanitize it before passing it to the VAPI HTTP call note and for that I just have to have a edit field node which you can add just like pressing plus and searching for edit field this one this one is a node that we are using right here right and in this one all I need to do is to just drag and drop the fields that are valuable to me so I'll just set the field name and I'll just drag and drop this value to right here and we'll pick up right this so you can see this is emitting my name which is right here right and next up we can add a field called email in which we can just drag and drop the email from here to here and we can add the phone number field from here now this is where a trick comes right so if we do direct phone number you can see that it will directly link the phone number one is to one in the same format that it was made in but this is not what we want we have to cleanse the phone number and have it without any of these brackets or dashes or spaces right and for that we have to add this small regex after the default json body so if you need i'll just zoom into this and you can just take a screenshot of this i'll also put this whole workflow completely for free in the description below so you can just download and see what i have done here but this step is very important because without this even if you have one little space anywhere in this phone number the vapi call will error out so this one is the most important part of this whole automation to cleanse what format you're getting from the phone number from Neto forms in between having this expression node and then passing the sanitized phone number to the VAPI caller right so once this is done now we have all the fields that we require for the AI caller now this step should be easy if you have been following me for quite some time but even if not I'll explain how you can set this up completely from scratch so for that let's go to our VAPI dashboard okay we are in our VAPI dashboard and the first thing that we'll do is to create a new agent which I have already done and which you can do simply by clicking on create agent and clicking a blank agent like this and I have given it a name Neto form agent and this is my config so I'm using OpenAI GPT 4.1 mini and I am just using assistant speaks first and we can customize the first message by let's say hello I'm I speaking to and this is called dynamic variables let me quickly tell you what VAPI means by this so this is the VAPI docs for dynamic variables and in which VAPI has defined these things as dynamic variables and like that you can easily inject a dynamic variable inside any of the messages of your agent like this and I have given a very simple system prompt and you can customize it according to what use case you are using it for Maybe you are filling a feedback form or you're in HR. In your case, employees are filling this form and sharing some data and you want to call them back for any use case. This system prompt is what you will configure. Now, there are a few things which I always change in a default VAPI agent because I don't like the defaults that VAPI set in these fields. So the first thing that I do is to make sure my model of voice configuration if you're using deep gram is aura 2 secondly these background sounds are always default or something else which i don't like i want to have the background sounds of always and i'll make sure the transcriber this is using is of my choice which is right now deep gram and if you want to invoke any tool calls inside your outbound agent you can also add those tool calls right here i don't touch any of this what i do touch is voicemail detection because i want to have vapi as my voicemail detector so that I don't waste my minutes of my agent if voicemail is detected on the other end by default it's off but I always change it to VAPI now this is exactly what I want my agent to sound like right if I come this node this is a simple HTTP request node which I have created and using an API post call to this endpoint which you can find out by going to VAPI docs going to API reference and the endpoint we are going to 
call is this create call endpoint right so the long way is to try it and make your call yourself using all of these options or you can just copy this json which i'm going to anyway include in the description and all you need to change is the assistant id and the phone number id in your use case and i'll tell you how to get that as well so you go to your wapi dashboard and whatever assistant you have made this is the assistant id that you have to copy from right here go back to your n8n and paste this right here and the phone number id is the id of the phone number from which the call will happen so that can be either a phone number that you have purchased via wapi or something that you have imported using twilio or any other service so in my case i'm using this so i can copy this id right here and then paste it exactly right here and all of the other things will remain exactly the same make sure there is no syntax error inside this json because every single curly bracket every single comma is important and is in the correct format right so all you need to do is to just have this and then your node will be ready to use okay now let me show you in real time how this all works so if this looks all correct and if I execute the workflow and I go back to my Neato farm right here and I make it side by side and I fill out my details and my name is in my email is this is this and as soon as I click submit the workflow should trigger so I click submit right here and it should be triggering like that. I should be getting a call. So let's see. Yes, we have a call. Hello. Hello, am I speaking to Rish Oberwall? Yeah, this is Rish. Hi, Rish. I just wanted to check in and ask if you faced any issues while using our services on the website. Your feedback is important to us. No, thank you. That's why you did hear, Rich. If you ever meet any decision or have any questions in the future, feel free to reach out. How a wonderful you. day. Yeah. It works. This whole workflow works. And when somebody fills a form, this whole workflow will get triggered and that person will get a call and you can customize what the agent is going to say using the system prompt right here. And you could see that my name was injected dynamically using this name tag or dynamic variables from Wappy, which was the first message from the agent, right? And just to show you how the call looked like inside Wappy, we can check the logs and this was the call that just happened, right? And here's the transcript. So this is Rish, yeah, no, thank you. So this is what just happened on the call. And this is the analysis, the summary and the evaluation, the transcript. This is what we will pass on to this node, which I have created right here, which is the post call report. If the call happens, there always be a report after the end call. And usually what we did was that we always had a web hook that will catch that post call report and inserted all of that inside a Google Sheet. Now with latest N8N update, we don't even need that. N8N natively has something called as N8N tables and we can have and record all the data inside a table within N8N and then we can decide what to do with it. Let me show you what that is. So let me get out of this. If you go to the home base, you should see something called as data tables now inside N8N. Let me show you how to create a table from scratch. So I'm going to press this and create data table, right? So I can say test yt and you can add any number of columns and you can give all of these types to these columns so if i go to my uh, created table i have added a customer name customer number summary and transcript and these fields created at updated at and id are the defaults right now even if you have created this there is one very important step that you have to take which is go back to your n8n go back to your workflow 
and this webhook is going to work only for this flow. But to catch what happened after the call, you have to add another webhook. And for that, just the same way, you can just add a webhook trigger because you see both of them have a lightning bolt kind of icon, which means that these are the trigger node. And for that, we'll just create a simple webhook trigger node like this. And we will copy this test URL to test things and production when we deploy this. So we copy this test URL, go back to our VAPI, uh, and you have to add this URL inside the messaging part right here. And the work is not done yet. Even if you do this and leave all the default settings, VAPI is going to send a webhook request on every single word you speak, which is not what we want, right? What we want is to only get the end of the call report or transcript. And for that, we have to uncheck all of these. These would be checked by default. And if you forget to do this, you will get so many web, you'll get so many web hook requests that you will go crazy, right? So you will unselect all of this and you will only select end of call report and transcript that is final. Even if you select this transcript, you will get multiple webhook entries for every single call, like in the orders of hundreds. We don't want that. We only want the finalized transcript to be sent to our webhook, right? So we select this and that is all. So this is the full workflow that is right here, right here. And then we can connect the init and table node, which you can just go like this and select for tables. And you will see data table as a new node, which is still in beta, but is very, very useful. And for this, you just have to select your uh, table, whatever you have named it. And then you can select map each columns manually. And like I said, I created these four columns, customer name, number, summary, and transcript. And you can just drag and drop whatever fields you want to match with these respectively. So this is very, very simple way. You, you can just drag and drop from here to here with no change, right? And this is now the complete automation, which will not only call the people who have filled your form, but also gather the post call data inside an init end table. And then you can add a node where you want to send them to Slack or emails or Telegram or WhatsApp. It doesn't matter. It's just up to you, right? So let me show you. So let me now give you the full demo of how this works. So I'm going to unpin this, right? And I'm going to execute this like this form on the left. And if I fill this form and hit submit, this automation should trigger and I should get a call, right? So that, and let's click submit and wait for the automation to get triggered. I'll close this. And it just got triggered. And now I should get a call within few seconds. Here's it. Hello, am I speaking to Rish Overwall? Yes, this is Rish. Thank you for confirming Rish Overwall. Could you please let us know if you faced any issues or difficulty while using our services? Your feedback is important to us to improve your experience. No, everything went fine. That's great to hear, Rish. If you ever need any assistance or have any questions in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Okay, now I should get a post call summary of this call in few seconds from VAPI. And here it is. And we can see that we should have a summary like this. And we should have a transcript as well. And now if I execute this thing, it will get logged inside my init end table. So if I do this, we will have uh, my name as customer name, my contact number as here, the, the call summary and the transcript of what exactly happened inside this call. So using this one init end workflow, we'll have this complete system that calls anybody who fills our form inside our website or otherwise talks to them and then gets us the summary and the whole transcript and saves all of that inside an end table. And then we can add any node like Slack or email or Telegram or WhatsApp, depending upon where we want to get these summaries and transcript. So that is all. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, you might also like the one that is right here on your screen. And if you want to deploy these kind of voice AI automations, I'll give a QR code on the screen, which you can scan and get in touch with me. And also the links to all of these templates and the link to book a meeting with me will also be in the description below. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.